Hey there, Precoc 11. If we had more time, I would uh, be able to do this in class with you, but obviously now you're at home for more than half the time. So uh, instead of an in-class activity, I'm going to have a really quick run through of this page and uh, you'll lose out on the activity, but I think you'll get the hang of it because it's mainly about the, the terminology anyway. So if we were in class, what we would do is we would take a uh, Nerf gun and we would shoot it sort of upwards in the air. I would hold it about say four feet off the ground and we'd shoot it upwards just so that it is below the ceiling doesn't hit the ceiling or anything it would go up and then it would come down and hit the ground like that and that shape is one um, where you have something flying through the air like that that shape is the focus of this unit that we're looking at this type of function is called a quadratic function and you get that when you have something launched into the air like that where it's it doesn't have an engine or its own propulsion it's just what you call a projectile where it's launched into the air and then that initial boost is what carries it through so uh, if we were trying to draw a, a better graph of that i'll tell you that let's say again if i launched it from about shot it from about four feet off the ground so this is the the vertical here is going to be the the height off the ground which you could call h but i'm going to call it y because that's what you're used to and it would i would be holding the gun in sort of a bit of an upward uh, direction and the ceilings in the room are about ten and a half feet so we would try to aim to get it not quite up to the ceiling it might go up to nine feet or something like that and this is going to be not time but this is going to be the horizontal position like how the distance that the thing travels horizontally which just again to keep it simple we'll call it X because again that's what you're used to uh, it would Usually when we do it, it would travel about, let's say, 22 feet. So it hit the ground about there. And somewhere in here, it would come to a maximum. So I am just going to draw it approximately like this. It's going to come up to about a... Uh, let's try again. Uh, I'm going to draw it about like this. It's going to come up to a maximum of about 9. And we'll try to hit that point down there like that. All right. So that is part of uh, a quadratic function. And the shape of that graph the shape itself is called a parabola or a parabolic shape you may have heard that word before because a lot of things in the world are parabolic shape uh, as i said anything launched through the air like that there's a lot of mirrors and reflectors and uh, satellite dishes and things like that that are parabolic in shape now the terminology that we're looking at here is this terminology down below this stuff uh, some of it you already know um, first of all, the ones that you know here are uh, domain and range. The domain of this thing. The domain of this thing is the possible x values. Now it started at zero meters horizontally. No, sorry, not meters, feet. This is in feet. Uh, it started at zero feet and went to about 22 feet. And so what you say is that the, the range is greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to 22. You can write that with a double inequality. So you can say it's less than or equal to 22, uh, but greater than or equal to zero. That's a double inequality. You read it from here. You read it that way. X is greater than or equal to zero and X is less than or equal to 22. Uh, how, you, how you read that. The range, possible Y values, the range is uh, from 0 up to the way I drew it here 9 saying it it hit a maximum height of 9 feet there You can write the same kind of inequality for that You can say it's less than or equal to 9 but greater than or equal to 0 domain and range for that For our situation here. We had this start point and this end point when you uh, start graphing quadratics later on just in general where they're not tied to a situation like this you're gonna find that uh, this would just continue on here. There's no kind of end points. And in that case, the, uh, the range would have still an upper boundary because it would be a, a maximum of that, but it would just continue down forever. So this part of it wouldn't be there if it wasn't tied into our situation here. The reason it has that lower boundary of zero is because the thing hits the ground and can't go any lower than that. And also, if it did that, if it continued, um, to the left and the right, it would cover every x value eventually. So instead, we wouldn't have this. We would say that x can end up being 
any real number so that your domain would just be all real numbers. That's in uh, when we're just looking at general quadratic functions. For what we're doing here, we do have this restriction on the domain and on the range because it hits the ground, doesn't go beyond that, and didn't go before it started right at the beginning there. Anyways, domain and range. So we've got those two out of that terminology. We have uh, one you're, I'm sure, familiar with, the y-intercept. The y-intercept there is uh, four. It's four feet because that's the initial height, right? The y-intercept in this situation represents the initial height. You can write it as a point if you want, like coordinates of a point there. You could say it's zero, four, or you can say it's just four. Uh, so we've got that one. And we can also talk about the x-intercept or x-intercepts, which are also sometimes referred to as zeros. The x-intercept here is this, 22. And again, you can write it as a point if you want, or you can just write it as 22. Um, the reason it says x-intercept, like in this case, there's just one x-intercept. It's the kind of the where it hits the ground in the end. But again, if this was just a general parabola and it went both directions here, uh, over at this side, it would hit hit that zero, hit this hit this axis again over there, and the other x-intercept. These these shapes, since they're curved like that, can have two x-intercepts. Again, in our case, it's our domain's limited, so it only has this one, but they could have two, and you'll see that when you just graph them in general later on. So x-intercepts or zeros. Uh, the other things that we have here, max or min value. That probably should make some sense to you. Uh, this has a maximum value. When you're talking about the maximum or minimum value, you're talking about the y values here. You're saying what's the highest y value that the function has, the function value. The highest it goes is nine here. That was the highest height. The, so you'd say that it has a maximum value of, of nine, right? y equals nine. Uh, when you graph them in general later, you'll see some that are this way. They're, uh, they're opening up like the, the, if it's like a bowl, the kind of the inside of the bowl, it opens up. Whereas this one, sort of the inside of the thing opens down like that. All right, so we have max min value. And uh, the last two, which are maybe new to you here is this vertex. The term vertex just means corner or sort of turning point. And for this thing, the, the turning point, the place that it changes direction is right in there. So in our situation, I just drew it roughly, but the, the, the vertex is that point right there where it is going up to that point and then it's going down, right? So it's increasing before that and then it's decreasing. The coordinates of that point are nine, nine, right? X is nine, Y is nine. That's the, the vertex. And then the last thing here, axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry, again, it's not going to look symmetric here because we have these two endpoints. But let's imagine again that it just keeps going this way. And we have this shape going this way. And that it just keeps going. It is symmetric right down the middle there. Like it's a mirror image of itself if you reflect it back and forth. So that line, it's like a line of symmetry. You've probably looked at that before when you look, say, at letters of the alphabet, like the letter A has a line of symmetry right down the middle there. This you call it an axis of symmetry, but that's basically what it is. It goes right through that vertex there, that axis of symmetry. All right, so that's an introduction to some of the terminology about quadratic functions and that parabola shape that you're gonna become very familiar with, all right? As far as this thing down here, don't worry about this. We're not gonna bother trying to worry about that. We're going to get used to using Desmos uh, after this, but I don't want you to have to worry about it. This is not going to matter whether we do this or not. So leave that, move on to the next thing. All right, and I will uh, hopefully send you another video to help you with that.